guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. I got her on the jack today because we did receive the rotors. These are the new rotors. They are not waved, first off. As you can see, the top, these are a wave rotor, the old ones, and these are the new ones. I just got them round, and they don't have the inner hub. So I'm actually waiting on the bolts, the stainless steel hardware for these rotors. They should be coming in any like any minute, any hour, but I have the bike on the jack now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything ready. I'm gonna take the axle nut covers off, pop the axle out, pop the calipers off. I do have a new, I just changed these brake pads, but I'm not taking any chances. Anytime, like I have already told you guys, anytime you change out the rotors, you should install new brake pads, even though I just put these brake pads on. I'm gonna go all new, so this way eliminates any kind of possibility uh, to have any kind of problem. So what I did was I just picked up a set of stock Harley pads because also what I noticed and I heard from some people, comment down below if you heard this as well, but the more high performance pads, it's kind of like on a sport bike, they don't generally work at slow speeds, you have to kind of heat them up and then they start working and grabbing really well. I don't believe there's anything wrong with the stock Harley-Davidson pads. So that's what I picked up. And they also come with the spring clip, new spring clip and new pin. So this way, everything's new on the caliper and there won't be any issues there. Also, we're going to be taking off the wheel. I'll be taking off the existing Arlen Ness 14 inch waved rotors off of this thing because they are warped. And just so you guys know, these are Arlen Ness rotors. And I did purchase them from the company, but I'm really, really unhappy. And I don't think I'm going to be purchasing anything from them in the future. I'll tell you what happened is because when I reached out to them, I told them my issue. I told them what was happening. And basically they told me, got to talk to warranty and returns department. I just purchased these rotors not long ago. There's not many miles on them. They should be warrantied. Um, I just wanted to speak to somebody about it. So anyway, they told me to call the um, warranty and parts and, oh, sorry, warranty and returns department, which I've called. This is going back two and a half weeks now since I made the first video um, about it, even before I called them. I've called them about five times. I left four different voicemails. And then uh, I actually called the sales department. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I called the sales department, spoke to the gentleman a couple times already. He told me, listen, give me your phone number. I told him who I was. I was being out and honest and open with them. I told them, this is John, Cycle Fanatics YouTube channel. Um, I'm having this issue, blah, blah, blah. He said, give me your number. I will hand it to him personally. He'll get right back to you. That never happened. That was a week and a half ago. And to give them a fair shake, I called them this past Monday again to no avail. I got no return phone call. Nobody answered the phone. I'm really upset. I'm really disappointed. This is the one purchase that I actually made. Everything pretty much on the bike is sponsored by my sponsors and supported by companies. Um, so I keep getting a text, sorry. But a lot of these parts on Silverback, basically 98, 99% of it is really companies that support the channel, support the build, my sponsors. But this is one product that we couldn't get a sponsor for or a company to support uh, the product for. So I purchased them. So that's why it's kind of more, I guess, personal. They were expensive. They were over $700. And mind you, even though crappy customer service, I still bought the Arlen Ness 14 inch big brake rotor because I like how the product looks. And I kind of said, let me just give it a second shot. This could have been just a, a defective part. And they could have talked to me and they could have said, okay, I'll ship you out a new one um, or give you a return, whatever. But like I said, I'm really disappointed that they at least couldn't give me the decency, the courtesy of a return phone call. 
Even if they had to call me and tell and tell me, hey, John, you know what? But I got no response. And that's what's kind of upsetting because let me tell you, whether it's Ciro 3D or Chromeworks, if you call them and you tell them you have a problem, immediately, immediately you will have a resolution. And that's what it's all about. It's about customer service. And that's, it's just very important. I'm sure you guys will agree with me. But anyway, enough of that. So we're gonna put on the 14 inch uh, big brake rotor kit. We're gonna swap it out. I hope I don't have any issues because I don't know. Um, uh, I, we're gonna have to go with somebody else, but let's see what happens. Keep our fingers crossed. But like I said, we're gonna be taking off the wheel. I'll take all that off. And it's super simple. Just take these axle nut covers off. You're gonna have to unloosen the nut on this side and then loosen up that bolt right there. The axle will pop out. You're gonna have to take the calipers off though before you do loosen up the calipers here, take out the two bolts, take the calipers off and then take out the axle, drop the, we'll hang the calipers over here. We'll put something on the engine guard so it doesn't get scratched. We're gonna drop the tire and then we're gonna be taking out these five bolts on the rotor and then I will come back as soon as UPS drops off the stainless steel fasteners for the new rotors and then we'll install them, change out the brake pads and then we'll take it for a ride and I'll let you guys know my honest thoughts. So stay tuned guys. All right, so I took the wheel off the calipers. Let me show you guys. There is like a little neck in the pad, not sure what that's from. Hopefully you guys could see it right there. But anyway, you gotta take that pin out right there that holds, it goes through both pads. We're gonna be replacing that pin and that little spring clip, you have to pull out in order to pull that pin out. We're gonna be replacing that spring clip as well and then replacing our pads. We're gonna do that now. And then we are going to wait until we got the fasteners. But in the meantime, I'm going to take the uh, old rotors off. All right, so I got one side done. We got the new pads in as well as the new pin and clip that holds that pin in that goes through the uh, brake pads so they don't come out. That's another safety feature, obviously, so the pads don't come out. So one side done. I'm going to do the other side now. Took off the old rotors, got the wheel ready. My Calipers are ready with the new pads, both sides. Everything's set. Here are the rotors. And what's strange is, if you guys could see how there is like, I don't know if they're burn spots. It's just, you could see that it's not hitting the brake pad properly. I don't know what's going on. But like I said, um, there was over 10 thousandths of an inch difference on the dial indicator when I checked them. Yeah, these are the old ones. Obviously, you know, you're not gonna be able to see it with the naked eye. But they're, they're definitely warped. So it's just a waiting game now, waiting for the fasteners to come in and we're gonna be putting these on let me show you guys the difference. Let me put this one here. So basically that's how it's gonna mount like that. They're the same size, but I'm not gonna have that hub, which is good because obviously it's less weight, less material, but I'm not gonna have the gold anymore, which honestly I don't care at this point. I just need a set of brakes that is going to function and operate correctly. And these will look good. Let me show you guys how that'll mount up on the bike, just like so. And that actually looks really nice as well. So um, like I said, we're just waiting on the UPS truck. I'll be, hang tight, I'll be right back. Restart the video as soon as they deliver the fasteners. Okay, heard somebody outside our boy mr ups i got two packages one is the 
fasteners to the rotors, and the other one is some Ciro 3D lighting, which we will be putting on right after I put the rotors on. So I opened up the package and I'm pretty pissed off because I made a terrible uh, mistake ordering the part. I didn't order two. I thought it came as a set, but it comes and I just checked and verified that, yeah, it was my mistake. These come in a package. It's the bolt bushing and washer for one rotor. I thought it was for the set. So now I just had to go online and get it shipped two day air and spend that extra money because we're supposed to be going on a bike some breakfast this Saturday all the way into Pennsylvania and I need the bike. Sorry guys. Anyway, I'll, sh I'll put the one rotor on the wheel, torque that up, show you basically what I'm gonna use. We're gonna use a little blue Loctite, torque it to about 30 foot pounds and then I'm gonna have to wait, but this video obviously will keep going. I'll have to wait two days until I get the other package of fasteners, I can't believe I made that mistake, but uh, stay tuned. I'll show you guys this rotor, how it looks on the wheel. So per their Arlen S's recommendation for these rotors, they're supposed to be torqued to 30 foot, foot pounds. So that's what we're gonna set our torque wrench at. If you guys were wondering, because the other rotors are actually recessed the holes. So this way it perfectly aligns the rotor. The bolt actually has a bushing at the end of it which is going to go into that hole and recess the rotor perfectly and align it on the hole. It comes with these spring washers as well. And I'm gonna put a little dab, a blue Loctite on it. So I don't have any chance of them backing out and then we'll torque it to 30 foot pounds. Okay, there's one rotor on, looks really good. Looks really nice. You can see the wheel more. Um, I don't know if I'm going to miss the gold on there. The gold did look, did look good on it. But obviously, I really don't have any gold on the bike. So it's really not going to matter. I do have the Legend shocks in the back that are gold. But uh, no big deal. Now I just got to wait another two days to get the other fasteners. These are all torqued down with Loctite. I put a piece of blue tape just so I know which side the wheel was on the direction also the tire has uh, a direction on it as well so I have a piece of blue tape so I know it's going to be on this side we have the one rotor on it looks it looks really good hopefully it comes in the fasteners coming in two days we could finish this up but let's open up the zero 3d box and let's see what we have in the meantime, for the Street Bob 114. Let me show you guys what I have. Zero 3D, hook this up. We got a black engine bolt cap kit, but we're not gonna put this on yet until the engine performance stuff is done. So this way we it doesn't come off and on, off and on. So we're gonna leave that on the side for now. But what we do have, oh yeah, we got some, got a sticker right there. Slap that on my helmet. We have the front lights, LEDs for the front, which we're gonna put on. And we have the LEDs right here, rear signal light inserts for the rear with black bezel. All right, so we got already the center headlight LED. That's already stock. Changing out these incandescent bulbs right here with the orange lenses and replacing them. And then we're gonna be replacing these incandescent bulbs here in the back. So now what's great about the Ciro 3D lighting components, this is a whole sealed LED unit. You just, it's all plug and play, basically just goes right into the socket. It's got the real nice black bezel. It's going to look sweet. Look how sick that looks, that looks nice. Love the black bezel, clear glass red led light look at that that looks sweet it's all done same thing goes for this side beautiful black bezel look how bright real nice much better than the amber and then when we go ahead and put the turn signal on it is amber or the flashers, 
Then when we shut everything down, goes back to white, which I love. Let me show you guys the back. Much, much brighter than stock equipment. Wow, you can't even look at it, even in the daylight here. It's really bright. Wow. Two days later, okay, finally got the other fasteners for the other rotor. I'm gonna finish this install up. We're gonna do the same thing, put the rotor on, put these bolts on, torque them down, and I'm going to obviously put the wheel assembly back on. We have our new brake pads already in. And then I'll show you guys, I'll put everything all together and then I'll drop the bike down and show you guys how it looks with the new rotors here in just a second. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So anyway, finally, after receiving the rest of the fasteners, I pulled silver back out. And all I have to tell you is I actually like the look better with these rotors than I did with the other ones. I'll tell you why. These, it's a much cleaner look. I like that the actual, that the top is smooth instead of waved. You could see more of the wheel. I know you guys did like, and so did I. I like the gold hub, but that's not important. What is really important is that these rotors hopefully are going to work. So as you guys can see, it is about to come down right now. So I don't have a chance to actually take it for a test ride. So I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow to do it. But anyway, let me show you guys how it looks. It looks incredible. It looks really good. Check it out. I also took that bushing off, that aluminum bushing, and I actually sanded it and cleaned it down and painted it high gloss black so it doesn't, it all blends in black. I also took a little paint and painted around the ABS sensor right here just so all of it looks black and there's no silver. I think it looks a lot better than before. So many people are messaging and emailing me saying that they're having the same issue. So I really don't think it's uh, just my uh, a coincidence that it just happened to me. It seems like it's happening to a lot of people. So what I re recommend for you guys to do, if you do have them on order with Dave or anybody, until someone tells us what's going on, I just, I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't purchase the product because it is really, it gotten so bad where it was really dangerous for me to, to ride the motorcycle and that's what you guys want you guys want some honest information and and that's what you guys got some honest information i cannot hide it from you because i don't want you guys to purchase something or have something on your bike that's unsafe you know if it's something like cosmetic that's a different story uh i still wouldn't bullshit you guys but you know what i mean we're talking about front brakes 70 85 percent of your braking power comes from the front this is no joke. And if they don't operate correctly, it's uh, it's I don't want anybody to get hurt. So just be careful, be weary about those rotors. Get something else, whether it's Galfer. Um, I hear a lot of good stories about Galfer. I got a lot of my boys riding with us. They got Galfer, they don't seem to have a problem. So just be careful. But anyway, we're gonna take her for a spin tomorrow, but hang tight in this video. We'll be showing you guys the ride and um, I'll let you guys know what I think about these. It's the next day. I told you guys I was gonna take it for a spin. We actually, me and Sandy just got back. Did a little short ride for Robert Simmons paying it forward. He has actually his first annual global preloader group ride going on today. 
So we did a little video footage for him and we took a ride. Robert, wish you all the success, brother. Good luck on this global group ride. And uh, anyway, just got back. And let me first tell you guys that the brakes are absolutely unbelievably awesome. They are. I'm always gonna tell you guys the truth. When I left JD Cycle Works, the day that we put these rotors on right here, okay? The day I left JD Cycle Works, I immediately had a problem. So what was happening when I left JD Cycle Works, if you don't know, or I'm just gonna tell you guys again, so basically what was happening is I left JD Cycle Works after he did obviously the big build on the bike. We put these 14 inch Arlen Ness big brake rotor kit on the bike on Silverback. As soon as I left going down the road, applying brake pressure, I immediately felt the lever like pulsate. I knew something, it just wasn't right, but I wasn't sure, but I knew something wasn't right. I said, maybe because they're waved you see the top? So a lot of people are saying with the Galfers also, with any kind of waved rotor, you're initially up to possibly 100, 200 miles. You're initially going to get a slight fluctuation and brake, uh, like a brake lever pulsation that I was getting. So that's what I kind of thought it was because the, ro the brake pads have to kind of break in to the rotor. But having said that, as I started putting miles on the bike, hunt, couple hundred, several hundred, it, it was getting progressively worse. But then when I went to Daytona and coming back from Daytona, I put 1200 miles on the bike. It was, it was horrible. The braking was horrible. The whole front of the bike was shaking. I couldn't even honestly stop. I, would, I was really using like 90% of the back brake, taking it easy. Uh, it's a scary feeling not having front brake. As you guys can see, I hope hope you guys can see, the brake pads were not even hitting flush. Let me show you guys. There's like spots, right? The brake pad was not even hitting. It was like hitting there, hitting there, not hitting there, hitting there, hitting there, hitting there like spots all over them. So this rotor is definitely warped. I wanted to verify that. I bought a dial indicator, put it on the bike, and they were like over 10 thousandths, 12 thousandths, 13 thousandths off. So that's way, way out of spec. So anyway, I put these rotors on, as you guys seen, this rotor is a floating rotor. I don't know, again, I'm gonna tell you this guys, I don't know whether it is just a flaw in the material, a flaw in the manufacturing, I'm not sure. Or did I get a bad batch? But going back to that again, I received multiple, multiple messages and emails from other viewers and subscribers that purchased the same rotor they're having the same problem so i don't think it's a coincidence so and going back to arlen ness i've i've tried to speak to them several on several occasions i left them at least four voicemails i spoke with someone in sales they told me they were gonna give my phone number and name to the gentleman that does returns and warranties that never happened so as far as now with the new brakes they are working beautiful I'm gonna tell you the truth. They work absolutely beautiful. And as you guys can see, the pad, look at that. It's wearing perfectly on the rotor. Look at that, perfect. You can see the line perfectly. There's no spots, there's no like burn marks, zero. So when I was just on the ride, I brought it up to speed, broke them in for a couple miles, but then brought it up to speed Grab the handful of brake. It's absolutely just like from factory. It's smooth. There's zero lever pulsation. The front of the bike's not shaking. There's literally zero, zero issues. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the braking power on these 14 inch big brake rotor kit is amazing. It's truly, truly amazing. It's definitely 100, without a doubt, better than stock. 
because they're 14 inch. So basically what I'm trying to tell you guys is issue with these, with the floating rotor, no issue with these. Even though I'm really, really disappointed in Arlen Ness customer service because no one's returned my phone call. I'm really upset about that. I even went out, even after they didn't even return a phone call, I still purchased them with my own money. I purchased the rotors because I wanted to stay with uh, the 14-inch big brake rotor kit and have that stopping power. I was skeptical, obviously, at first. I thought maybe it's going to happen the same thing as it did on the floating rotor, but there is honestly zero, zero issues. So if anything, I would recommend going with these, this non-floating rotor. It does not have the hub. You do have to purchase purchase two sets of fastener kits because one set only is for one rotor, which I made the mistake on. I had to wait a couple days for the next set. I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you guys posted after I put on several hundred miles on these rotors, I'll keep you guys posted. But as far as now, this feels amazing right off the get-go where those rotors did not. I immediately, um, there was a, an immediate problem with them, like I said, with the fluctuation in the lever. So that's my story, guys. I'm sticking to it. If you guys are interested in the big brake rotor kit, I would definitely recommend these over those because I don't know, there might be an issue I, I think there is, there might just be a manufacturing or a design issue. I don't know, because like I said, there was several, several people emailing me and I just don't think, my personal opinion, I just don't think it's coincidence. All right guys, so that's it with this video. Silverback is back on the road and ready to go, throw down some miles. And not only that, I think it actually looks really, really good in black. And I could definitely clean the wheel better because that hub is not there. All right, guys, peace out. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on the next one.